Hey guys, how are you? So let's talk about the most important languages of 2019. These are always popular videos because I can understand beginners are always looking for that, that language. Okay, this is the language that I need to learn. The reality of the situation is that there's really no number one language. This is a fantasy, this is uh, an illusion that beginners would be interested in because at the end of the day, the language that's gonna be number one depends on the type of work you're gonna do, depends on where you live, depends on the type of program programming that you want to do, right? You may think that AI programming is the greatest thing ever, but maybe when you get into it, maybe not so may not be so good for you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you go about figuring out what is the best language? What is the best language? Again, this is from my over two decades, over 20 years experience as a professional developer. So the first step is to figure out, is to learn the fundamentals. From fundamentals, pick a language, pick Python, pick JavaScript, pick Java, pick PHP, whatever language you want to learn, you pick, just pick that language, learn your fundamentals. Once you have your fundamentals, then you're going to have the nerd eyes. You're going to be able to, to interpret and see and understand what you're seeing out there. Right now, you're blind. I assume you've never programmed before. So you're blind to programming. You don't understand the difference between JavaScript and Python and what the implications of choosing this language or that language may be. You have no clue. So it's very hard for you to judge. So I, first thing I would say, just learn the fundamentals because first rule of programming, you don't lose if you learn a language. Even if you learn, let's say, JavaScript and you decide you don't want to code in JavaScript for whatever reasons, it's not a waste of time. Because that JavaScript learning that you just did will be 100% applicable to Python, to C Sharp, to PHP, uh, to whatever, Dart, whatever language you choose. Because all the modern languages share many of the same qualities and same characteristics. It's like learning how to drive a Porsche. If you learn how to drive a Porsche, high-speed powered Porsche, high-powered Porsche 911, you could easily drive a high-powered Audi, a high-powered BMW, high-powered Ferrari. Once you understand how to drive a well-built sports car, then you'll be able to drive any well-built sports car with minimal effort. Or learning to play um, guitar. Once you've learned one type of guitar, if you learn the Gibson, you don't have to relearn to learn the stratosphere or to learn uh, you know, or Les Paul or Stratosphere, Stratocaster, or learn the Les Paul, right? It, it's, it's all the same. It's it, chords of chords, you know, tunes are tunes. So don't get caught up with that. I know it's, it's your inclination. Oh my God, am I gonna go down the wrong career path? What happens if I learn the wrong language? Am I done? No, it doesn't work that way. But in fact, in your career as a software developer, you're gonna be moving from language to language to language, and the best, and the most advanced software developers will go into a project not even thinking about the language they're gonna use. They go into a project, they look at the project, and then after they've seen the specifications, they've seen what the project needs to do, then you just jump in and you learn whatever language or use whatever language, whatever, whatever framework that happens to be required for that particular job. Sometimes Ruby might be the best job, might be best for that job. Not likely, but sometimes. It might be Python, it might be PHP, it might be C Sharp, it might be Java, right? If you're designing a game, if you want to design a game that's going to run purely on Windows, you're not going to be doing this with PHP, you're not going to be doing this with Ruby, you're going to be doing it probably with C Sharp.net, or, or C Sharp rather. If on the other hand, you're going to be doing AI programming, you're not going to be doing that with PHP, you're going to be doing that with Python. If you want to do small web apps and websites for small business, small, medium-sized business, my number one choice by far is Python. Yes, you can do it, not Python, PHP. You could do it with Python, you could do it with Java, you could do it with uh, all kinds of languages, JavaScript. But PHP is just the workhorse there, and it's been around for so long. There's a huge demand for PHP developers because it really works. Like, yes, you can do great web apps with Python, but you can do it far, you can you could write far faster, more powerful, with Pipe with PHP because PHP just runs much faster than Python. Yes, computers, hardware is getting faster and faster and faster. So that lack of speed in a language like Python or Ruby becomes less and less important most of the time. But nonetheless, you have that advantage. I think that PHP is takes half of the RAM and CPU 
that Python takes. Last time I checked, maybe it's even maybe even faster now with PHP seven, which is the latest version. So you know, we can go on and on about examples. So again, step one: learn your fundamentals. You don't have to take my course. Whatever course is easier for you. Then once you have that basics done, you know, basics, I teach the web stack. I also teach Python. You do one of these things. Then with, with that training, which you get done very quickly, then you're going to be able to really judge the type of programming you may want to do. You may want to be a freelancer. You may want to get into AI. You may want to get into game development. I don't know. You have to look at the market as well, right? Game development sounds great, except then you get out there and you realize that jobs are few and far between and they work you really hard. You, if you want to make money, if your ultimate goal is to make money as a software developer writing code, the web stack kills. Web stack is by far the most, you know, I'm talking no degree, uh, no connections. The web stack is the king. And it's going to get even bigger and bigger and bigger this year in 2019 because recent events with Patreon and Facebook deplatforming de people. People are realizing small business owners and aspiring small business owners are realizing they've got to have a website. If you don't have a website, you're, 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 you're very vulnerable. So websites, web design, freelancing, web application development, WordPress development, this is going to be the king for freelancing. If you want to make money quick and make a lot of money quick, it's, that's, there's nothing better, nothing better. Yes. You can make good money with all kinds of languages, but there, you're going to find that, uh, for instance, I'll give you an example. With Python, a lot of the big money is in the AI. Unfortunately, a lot of the jobs in AI require some sort of comp sci degree, some higher education, some diploma. You know, web stack, you don't need that. You can get out, you can get, you can start building. With my course, you can get building commercial websites within the first uh, 30 to 60 days. I have many students, you can check in my YouTube comments, some have left uh, some comments by. I have many students, they've, they've, they've gone on within months uh, making money, within months of taking my course, being able to make a lot of money, some gotten really good jobs, some people started a good freelancing career, some people built this type of website, or this type of web app, et cetera, et cetera. That's the fastest way. Now, if you're wondering, well, how about the, you know, how about if I want to build the next Google or something? Well, matter of fact, one of my students, actually his company is, is a tech ed company. He, uh, they just partnered with Google. They just partnered with Google. Google just invested with them. And he's coming on soon to talk about how Studio Web helped him, well, launched his coding career. And he's going to get into that. Going back to the subject at hand, if you're, worried about which language to learn framework. I wouldn't be so worried because you can always switch from one to the other. As a professional developer, you will be if you really want to look at this as a career path. I would go into projects and I would sit there, assess the project and choose the language or framework that was required for the project. And sometimes I would learn a brand new technology, a brand new language based on what that particular job needed because I was not somebody who said, I am just a Java programmer or I, I am just a JavaScript programmer. I am a just a C-sharp programmer. No, I looked at myself as a software developer who would just use whatever technology was needed. I hope this helps. All right, guys, ciao, ciao. I'm gonna go outside just for a minute. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Not bad. So why, so why do I stay here? It's gonna be windy, so I better hold on to this. Yeah. Too windy. That's the only problem living up here. You get a ton of wind, a ton of wind, and it's pretty bad. So there you go, everybody. Welcome to the video. My name is Steph. I'm gonna try to straighten up this plat today. This the slanty shanty, no good.